हेलो एंड वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल सो एज यू कैन सी आई एम टॉकिंग टू मेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट हियर दिस इज गंगा एंड शी इज़ अ स्टूडेंट हियर इन द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ गेंट एंड शी वॉज वेरी काइंड टू इन्वाइट मी टू शो द लाइफ ऑफ स्टूडेंट हियर इन द यूनिवर्सिटी टूडे वीडियो इज़ अ वेरी रिक्वेस्टेड टॉपिक अबाउट द इंटरनेशनल स्टूडेंट्स इन बेल्जियम एंड शी इज गोइंग टू टेल अस अ लॉट अबाउट इट सो लेट्स बिगिन द वीडियो Hi so this is the complex of student residence hall and I live in one of them that's mostly filled with international students so I'll take you uh, uh you have a cycle stand where you can park all your cycles here mostly students travel by cycle you yeah. get it on rent or you can purchase it second hand so how did you get uh, did you have do you have a bike and Yeah, I actually bought a second-hand bike from Facebook Marketplace. And how much did it cost you? It cost me like hundred euros. Oh, not yeah, bad. Yeah, I think you get it even cheaper, like around fifty euros. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we can enter the building. Okay. And uh, how many floors are there in this building? So for this building, it has six floors. Um, and in the first floor, you have like swap shops, and you have a common room. Uh, Yeah, and I live on the sixth floor. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Hi, I'm Saidu <laughs> from Bangladesh. Hi. <laughs> so as you can see, there are many international students. One from Bangladesh, one from India, and lot of other Asian uh, students as well uh, who live in this building. And it's uh, especially the building for exchange students. Is yeah, it? these two buildings are mostly for exchange students, and it's pretty difficult to get in. Okay, there is a lot of competition. Yeah, and it's first come first serve basis. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the first floor. So I'll just show you around. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> uh, I'll just show you. So this first floor connects you to uh, like all the residence halls in this floor. Oh, okay. So this is a swap shop. We have three swap shops over here. This is What a very is a interesting swap shop. Ah, uh, so whoever is leaving can leave all their stuffs, like things that you don't need here. So you can leave them here, and you can get it. Like all the new students can find a lot of things. I got a bowl. I got a laundry like, basket. So it's a shop, so you need to buy it, or you can get it for free. No, you can get it for free. And when I am leaving, I might also leave some things okay. over here. Okay. Okay. And in this floor towards the end, you can do. uh it is like a study room uh, during exams it's open 24/7 but otherwise it's a place where people come together do your group tasks and all okay okay yeah and uh, there's a small garden where you can sit okay okay and i take you to my floor now we are on your floor yeah okay so can you please show us around Yeah so this is the common kitchen uh and everybody gets what two racks for themselves you have enough places to heat up or cook you have two microwaves and you get two shelves for yourself and if you can keep any of your stuffs okay. and people come around sit here eat dinners together so it's a nice hangout place yeah yeah very nice and towards there is my room so this is the and there is like approximately rooms on a floor and this floor i think there is around 30 rooms okay and all rooms are equipped with their own washrooms the kitchen is only common but it's not that crowded because mostly people don't cook uh, especially the people from europe but the international students in my wing there are a lot of indonesian filipino students and they cook a lot of non veg yeah. and yeah <laughs> it's pretty vibrant nice yeah. <laughs> now ganga is going to give me a room tour so let's go to her room and check it out hi <laughs> welcome follow me <laughs> Okay, so this is just like any other student residence room. Yeah. Uh, you do have two shelves over here. You get your own fridge to keep your things, and you have a washroom. Okay. Okay. Uh, with your shower, toilet, and everything. Okay. Should I open? Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you have a sink, you have a shower, you have a toilet, everything. So. Okay, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. And then here is the 
Mm, that was a mini hallway and then here is the room. Mm, you have a cupboard, a shelf and all of these furnitures they came with the room. Uh, I didn't have to purchase anything. Okay. There are certain dorms where you need to purchase cot and everything but here everything came with the room even the bed sheet and a uh, blanket came with the room. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah and you get two chairs, a dustbin and a sh uh, rack to keep all your stationery and all. Okay okay and, and the view is pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> so the like... room is on the sixth floor so yeah the view is pretty yes yes so this is a really nice room ganga and uh, yeah all right <laughs> it's like selling the room <laughs> like you get out of this <laughs> now that you have been introduced to ganga i am going to start asking her questions related to the application process the fees and all the important things which will really help all the international students who want to apply for the university of belgium so let's begin okay. hi ganga welcome to my channel so to my viewers can you tell me something about yourself and uh, uh, like your education in india and uh, how you ended up coming to belgium so yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Ganga uh, and thank you for having me on your yeah. channel. Uh, so, I am a B.Tech Food Technology graduate. I am uh, pursuing Masters in Food Technology at Kent University here. So, I researched a lot of universities across Europe. Uh, I chose particularly Europe and Australia uh, okay. because it's more closer to India and the weather is not so harsh. Mm -hmm. So, that, those are the particular reasons why I chose Europe and Australia and I particularly looked for the best universities across both these uh, areas and I came across Ghent University there are a couple of other universities too and finally I chose KU1 and Ghent my program is IUP Foods Inter-University Program in Food Technology uh, it is in KU1 and Ghent can you tell me about the minimum requirement uh, to be eligible for the master's program in Belgium University so um, most of the universities they do have a specific credit criteria and as long as you satisfy that you are eligible mm -hmm. and it might be satisfied in a four year bachelor's or sometimes even in a three year bachelor's too but uh, some people are here doing their second master's so their credit criteria only satisfies after doing these many masters and uh, then you need a minimum uh, IELTS because it's an English language course and IELTS even if you don't have an IELTS you will receive a conditional offer and if you submit your IELTS you will receive an actual offer and then you need a letter of recommendation or SOP based on their requirement for each university it is different okay okay uh, there are enough English speaking courses here which international students can opt for and uh, they don't need to learn the Dutch language. So uh, English language courses especially for science there are enough uh, across all fields I have no students who are coming from international students who are studying English courses. There are I believe that there are more Dutch courses for masters as well as bachelors but the problem is you need to have a native uh, language like that you need to be pretty fluent to have it. Okay. Yeah. okay, so uh, like English speaking students need not worry a lot because there are enough courses in English. So that yeah. is a really important factor, you know, which becomes a deal breaker for maybe many students. So that's a good news, guys. <laughs> so tell me about the application process, like how, how uh, it started, like which months you are supposed to apply when is the deadline and how long it takes to apply and what sorts of documents are needed so some all the things related to that okay uh, so for the application process uh, for my program it was through KU Leuven but uh, across most of the universities across Europe uh, the process application process is pretty simple it's all online uh, mostly there is no fees for the application it's free but for my program we had a fee which was not more than 7000 Indian rupees okay. but mostly it's free across uh, Germany, Netherlands and all uh, and the application process is online and you go to the university website it's pretty simple it's different for international student uh, and you go to the website register yourself first and you need uh, similar documents such as IELTS 
you need letter of recommendation, SOP. It is uh, very much particular to which university you are applying, but still in general, these are the documents that you need. Uh, and then um, you'll probably get a response in like a month or two. And you need to keep an eye for the deadline because it's very much dependent on the university. In website, it would be mentioned pretty clearly. And if you're looking for scholarship, deadlines will be far before the actual deadline. So if you're looking for scholarship, you need to really keep an eye out for the deadline. And if you receive an offer, you will be uh, like known in a month because they don't have a fixed number of seats. If they find you as a suitable candidate, they'll give you an offer. It's like that. Uh, did you get the admission through scholarship or uh, not? No, I am a self-paying student. For my program, there is no scholarship offered to Indian students, but there are a lot of opportunities across Europe, uh, especially the Erasmus program. So for that also, the application process is really simple. There is a website for Erasmus. You can apply up to three courses in a year. So in the Erasmus program, you can go type in your particular course. So for me, I search food. So if it's computer science, you can search computer science and you will be guided to the course website. You can apply it. It's also similar, just the deadlines would be different. Mm -hmm. And maybe they would have a separate interview process and all that. So did you have an interview process? Uh, I did apply for Erasmus and I did have a couple of interview process and uh, they'll select maybe one or two person from a country. Um, and yeah, interview process depends on how good your SOP is or your letter of recommendation is. Okay, okay. Can you uh, tell me about the acceptance rate of, of international students getting accepted in the Belgian University? Um, so I cannot generally say what is the acceptance rate, but in general, most of the universities, they don't have a specific limited number of seats. It depends whether they want to give you an offer, you do have an offer. Uh, but for my program, it was like around 25%. So I believe it would be around that range, like 25 percentage of acceptance is there. Okay, okay. And uh, can you tell me the exact uh, month uh, in which you applied and when you got the response and in when you came here from India? Uh, so I applied in the month end of June, July across different universities and some deadlines will be in January, February, March. So that is the time when you uh, end for the winter, winter admissions. And for winter admissions, the class starts on September, end of September or in the beginning of October. Uh, and if you have a result, you'll probably get it in two weeks or it can even be two months as well. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you came in the month of end of September? Yeah. Okay, and your classes started in October? Yeah, it started in that time itself, in the end of September itself. So uh, uh, your course is in food technology and you are actually KU Leuven student. Yeah. So, but you are doing your first semester in Ghent. So tell me something about that and when do you plan to go to Leuven? So um, my program is inter-university program in food technology. Uh, it is an inter-university program. That means I am a student of both KU Leuven and Ghent, but KU Leuven deals with the administrative side. And here in Ghent University, I believe that there are a lot of exchange students, especially people who are doing Erasmus or in Europe, I've seen that there are so many students who don't have one, they have one home universities, but they do pursue their next semesters in different other universities across Europe. So for me, my next semester will be in Leuven and based on my specialization, I can choose Ghent or Leuven for my uh, second year. Tell me about uh, how you got the uh, room and how difficult was the process, how easy was the process and uh, what are the tips and tricks to getting the room as a student for residence hall and if you don't get one what are the alternative options okay so finding a residence or a place to live is one of the first thing that you look for after you get an admission mm -hmm. so i was searching for private housing at the same time i did apply here so for my for me my course coordinator gave me the deadlines for the application for this residence hall the application was completely through university's website and if the university have their own residence, mostly it will be through their website or they will have sufficient information on the website. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need to keep an eye for the deadline or if they have enough vacancies or not. And if you're looking for a private housing, one of the most challenges is that to find a housing. And even if you find a housing, you need to choose a housing that 
covers your electricity and all other amenities that comes with the housing else mm -hmm. that charges might be really high for you to handle as a student okay so uh, so tell me about the pricing of the admission process for the like tuition fees and the residence hall uh, the tuition fees um, mostly for the Erasmus programs generally the fees is around six thousand to eight thousand or uh, nine thousand euros or maybe more than that. My program also has a fees around that, but for this year they do have a tuition fee waiver, which uh, allowed me to pursue my degree in just less than thousand euros mm. for a year. So next academic year, it would be somewhere around thousand euros. That is amazing. So and regarding the cost of the residence hall. Uh, the cost of uh, housing generally ranges from 350 to 550 and this residence hall including a private washroom and a common kitchen it comes around 481 for this year and it might increase the next year. So uh, now that you got an admission here and uh, everything is uh, ready so to apply for the visa what is the process? Uh, so visa, there are two consulates uh, in India, the Mumbai consulate and the Delhi consulate and for the uh, South Indians you need to apply to Mumbai and for the North Indians you need to apply to Delhi so you cannot apply the other way then you'll even if you go for the visa process it you won't be accepted okay. so visa process um, you need to start with submitting all the documents they'll first call you for a um, document submission you need to go to the uh, like you have different VFS centers across the country and you can go there and you can submit all your documents they'll verify it and then if there is any document which is missing then they'll ask you to submit those documents and if everything is clear they'll call for an interview interview is generally not mandatory but uh, yeah for this year uh, whoever i knew had an interview call for that you'll need to go to mumbai or delhi and then they'll ask you some general questions about in your finances do you have sufficient uh, support to does your parents have sufficient earnings to support you and all that what are your plans what are you going to pursue things like that do you need to have a block a blocked account here in belgium and the uh, like banking uh, like how do you go about that okay so to get to the visa process you need certain documents with you you need uh, your passport which has a validity for one year more than you are here like suppose your course is for two years your passport need to have validity more than that and then uh, you need to have your degree certificate which needs to be apostilled and you need a police clearance uh, pdc uh, and then uh, sorry, <laughs> you PCC. need a PCC, yeah, you need a police clearance and then you also need a blocked account certificate. Either it could also be that someone is willing to finance you and then, uh, but that thing like if somebody is financing you, you need to show your bank account and the process is pretty tedious. Mm -hmm. But if you have a blocked account, the process is a bit more simple and uh, there are private agencies who uh, provide you with a blocked account and for my course, my university was providing me with a blocked account so blocked account how it works is that you need to pay a certain amount to them for a year for me it was 11,500 euros um, it was based on the cost of living so every month they send you 950 euros into your account uh, it is the same amount which you paid and if you have that uh, it is clear indication that you won't be a liability for the uh, for the government and yeah I think those are the documents which we need so as you heard visa process is very tedious and lot needs lots of documents and things like that so if you want to know more in detail about that please uh, feel free to comment below and if i get enough requests then i will make a separate video related to that topic so ganga showed us around the entire residence hall and we had a nice chat about the application process and all the things related to that. Now we are going to go to the University of Ghent. It's uh, Although it's a weekend and we are not sure that it's open or not. But uh, we'll see, we'll find out and uh, we'll continue our uh, questions there. So let's go. <laughs> so 
वी आर इन गंगाज यूनिवर्सिटी सो गंगा टेल अस अबाउट दिस यूनिवर्सिटी द करिकुलम द आवर्स एंड द प्रोफेसर द टीचिंग स्टाइल एंड एवरीथिंग so uh, we are in the gent university campus copior it's a, a campus for bioscience engineering they have multiple campuses across the city and uh, my course is food technology and there are multiple courses like bio fisheries marine engineering and all that so our classes uh, it starts from 8:30 in the morning and we have classes all five days and some days the classes even go up to 6 o'clock in the evening and uh, sometimes very few days we don't get a break in the middle and we cramp up some lunch sandwiches and all that and uh, the teaching is one of the best thing that is uh, they provide here the professors are really expert in their field they know what is the current updates happening all the innovations and they are very much eager to answer the questions that we have and even if they don't know will guide you to the right person and mostly they know all the questions that we ask them regarding their field okay so how is it different from the indian uh, experience that you had in your field and the masters here uh actually i would say in the examination or the way we are preparing it's not much different in india also we cramp up a lot we write the exam it's a lot more of our theory and here i would actually say it's even more about theory we have very little practicals so there are courses that are especially oriented for practical courses those are not masters program but in masters program they focus a lot on theory and i believe even in india i've got lot more practical or lab experiences here it's lot more theory but it is uh, really intense and they do cover a lot of things at the same time they cover what is a recent innovation they'll um, reach you to the point where you know everything about the program or about the course you're studying okay okay uh you can say like it is difficult and you need to really work hard to you know understand the subjects and uh, uh tell me about the examination here and uh, Uh, yeah. so here it's not like a uniform examination system for every different subject you have a different examination pattern and mostly uh, you will have to work regularly all the exams it especially depend on what uh, subject you are studying on so you definitely have an internal component which means you will have to work throughout the uh, semester to uh, submit the assignment or report or maybe quizzes and all that and you definitely have an end examination uh, that can be written oral practical or yeah. anything uh, so uh, some subject just have an oral exam so it's up to the examiner to decide whether you pass or not for some subject you have a written component and an oral component some you do have to work on a project and submit the report yeah it's like that <laughs> tell me uh, like if in case a student does not clear the exam then uh, Uh, can they re attempt and what is the procedure for that uh, so <clears throat> passing the exam is actually a big deal but not passing is okay uh, you need to have minimum 50 percentage mark to pass the exam and if you don't pass you get an attempt every semester so if you don't pass in this semester you can attempt in august again or even if you don't pass then as well you can take later in the next coming semester uh, if you are taking in the same year sometimes some of your internal components will be carried over else you will need to take uh, that as well again you need to retake even your internal components again in between you must have holidays in between the semester so during summers so uh, during that time uh, students uh, can they do part time jobs and uh, uh, what type of part time jobs can they do and what are the uh what can they earn uh, hourly basis okay so uh, in the winter you have a very limited number of holidays maybe up to 10 days but in the summers you get up to 3 months mostly up to 3 months as long as you don't have a back paper and uh, during that time you can work up to 40 hours a week so during your curriculum like during the a uh, course period you can only work up to 20 hours a week but in the summers you can work up to 40 hours and uh, the hourly wage ranges between 12 to 15 euros and uh, i know people who are working in restaurants uh, who are working in warehouses and uh, different odd jobs yeah so how to apply for such uh, jobs 
so um, i know there are websites through which you can apply there are uh, websites like i go jobs now jobs and all that but mostly how people get in is through directly going there and asking is there a vacancy if so they'll directly give you a job else they'll deny it. no sorry currently we don't have maybe you can submit your resume and they'll call you back so uh are you doing a part time job and uh, where uh so i've just started working a part time job in a restaurant here I've, i work at service there and sometimes i do a work in the kitchen as well i know you just started your education here but uh, do you have any information related to uh, job opportunities post your completion of masters Okay so uh, it is entirely dependent on the student and your course universities doesn't directly provide you with the opportunities in their through them there are companies that come maybe through reference of the professors and all that but it is solely up to you to find a job opportunity and especially here you need to have a good understanding of dutch to have more opportunities with english you can still find a job but uh, it's more easy if you know the local language at least to a certain extent okay so can you tell me about the uh, like uh, activities apart from studies here like are there any events happening and what is the student life here how are the students interaction what is your experience till now so uh, since the course curriculum is pretty hectic there is very little opportunities for us to explore other things uh, we have not even traveled a lot we have just visited one city but uh, some courses are less hectic and i've seen couple of my friends who traveled across europe and all that uh, and student life mostly the belgian people they enjoy parties a lot so especially on thursdays you find the streets filled with uh, belgian students um, for For international students as well, um, there is no much cultural activities as we had back in India. But yeah, if you want to make your life entertaining, then yeah, it's all up to you. How difficult uh, was it for you to uh, start your life here? Like initially, like how much time it took for you to adjust and know the shops around and. groceries and everything related to that can you tell me about experience about that uh, so before coming here i actually had a lot of anxiety on how it would be especially moving to a country which is a uh, Belgium which is not very common to people uh, but for me I came pretty late towards the end, just before the classes started I came so I had my friends over here who knew the place around but the culture here is that you need to figure out what you want so still I took it upon myself to find the right places for me to go to find the best stationery shops uh, the grocery shops and all that so um, since you have google I think it's pretty manageable and uh, with google translate you can translate whatever is in dutch so i think that's also a drawback that you wouldn't learn the language by yourself uh, but yeah it is okay to manage uh, if, except for like first time when you can you'll have the anxiety but once you get used to it it's yeah easy to manage okay and uh, can you tell me about the monthly expenses that you face like uh, regarding food and uh, uh if students need a bike and all the things related to that so a uh, major expense is the rent which almost takes up to 50% of my blocked account it's 481 for me it can range up from 350 to 550 uh and then you have groceries it's better that you cook yourself so the grocery can range up to 120 to 150 euros and a transportation you have buses so one ticket is 2.5 euros which is quite a big amount but you can get a bus pass which is around 80 euros for 3 months or you can also purchase a bike which is the most convenient option you can go wherever you want whenever you want we are at the end of the video i just want to ask like uh, how do you find the belgium culture till now and any tips and tricks for the international students who plan to come here okay uh, so belgium culture is i think it's uh, so much about party and <laughs> they are all party people especially the students over here but uh, everybody is um, like they are open to talking especially in a university city like ghent uh, people are always smiling and they are always ready to help even i have got lot of opportunities where people were coming forward and then asking do i need a help or not so it's pretty nice uh, people are really good over here as far as i know and i have not faced any racial discrimination and all 
uh, and for upcoming students i believe that it's always best uh, if you can look for any student association for belgium you have an indian student association of luwen they actually help me with a lot of lot of my queries and um, it's always best to know uh, or find people over here through linkedin or people who have completed your course to get to know about what are the future opportunities and all that and as a whole uh, when you come to a country like europe be ready to explore and travel and yeah use the best of these two years okay that was a really good answer and uh, i'm sure that your answers will really help lots of international students who plan to come here and grow their career so i really want to thank you for uh, you know uh, taking out time and uh, answering all the questions and really helping I, i'm sure this will be really valuable to many students who watch this video so thank you so much ganga and i really wish you all the best for the upcoming semesters and i hope you have a great time in belgium yeah thank you so much <laughs> so that was the video guys i hope you really like this video and uh, if you have any queries questions please feel free to comment in the comment section below and i will try to answer those questions and also please give me suggestions on what topics you want me to make videos on i will try to make as many informative videos as possible so see you next time thank you bye bye